The NBA has changed a lot since the 80s and 90s. The league has modified rules to encourage more offense, and teams are running up and down the floor in transition, and guys are jacking up shots, three-pointers at an unprecedented rate. Now, that's led to a boom in scoring, but also a lot of teams have taken advantage of that, and a lot of teams have not. They've tried to. They just don't have the shooters. It's one thing if the philosophy is everybody's doing it, let's do it. I don't buy into that. You have certain teams that are really good at doing that. And other teams that know maybe we're not that good. Maybe we have a different strategy. Boston had a turnaround in January. Historical. They play defense. Celtics put the clamps on Kyrie and KD in round one. They kept the Greek freak and the Bucs in check in round two. And they've dominated the defensive end in the Eastern Conference Finals against an albeit banged up Miami team. Boston has limited Miami to less than 85 points in each of the last two games. And last night, the Celtics held Miami to just under 32% shooting from the floor. Boston's the better team. When both teams are healthy, then I think we have a battle here. Miami is not healthy. The Celtics are healthier. They have a long way to go before they're considered one of the top defensive units in recent memory. But in a league that's obsessed with offense, Boston is reminding everybody... You still win championships with defense. That may come as a surprise to a lot of people because it's like, well, we'll just outscore everybody. There is always a moment in just about every sport where somebody does or doesn't play defense. And a lot of times you'll get those moments where that defensive stop there changed the outcome. Changed the entire complexion of a series or a game. We've seen it in the Super Bowl. We've seen it in baseball. We've seen it in football. We've seen it in basketball. Two of the greatest players, if not the two greatest players of all time, should be remembered for a defensive play. Michael Jordan with the steal against Carl Malone before he hit the game-winning shot that won the NBA championship. People forget about it. It's a great defensive play on Carl Malone. And then LeBron's block on Andre Iguodala. So these are the two greatest players of all time. And also, you know what today the anniversary is? Larry Bird stealing the ball on the inbounds pass at the Boston Garden. So there's three of the greatest players of all time. And all three made defensive plays. But we focus on their offense. And and I understand that we do that, but the game is played at both ends. In basketball, you have to play at the other end. Football, you don't. You don't get that opportunity. Basketball, you do. And when you make a play, make a stop, make a steal, make a block, that can change the entire outcome, the complexities of a series. All right, uh, we'll have a poll question coming up, and I mentioned our play of the day as well. By the way, I was looking at this. For everybody who loves these super teams, You know, you got to just piece them together. Hey, put them together and we'll we'll win a championship here. I was looking at the Celtics roster. Jason Tatum, drafted. Marcus Smart, drafted. Robert Williams, drafted. Jalen Brown, drafted. Grant Williams, drafted. Peyton Pritchard, drafted. That's the core right there. Got a couple of free agents in there. And then I looked at Golden State. Steph Curry, drafted. Klay Thompson, drafted. Jordan Poole, drafted. Draymond Green, drafted. Kayvon Looney, drafted. James Wiseman, drafted. Jonathan Kuminga, drafted. If you're looking at 80% of these rosters, they're homegrown. And they're not super teams. They became a little more super because those players turned out to be great. And go back to the Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics had the number one overall pick. They won the lottery. And Danny Ainge was the general manager. And Danny Ainge loved Jason Tatum. He wasn't a foregone conclusion. Hey, this guy's going to be a, a superstar. And you'll, if you remember, when we were leading into the draft, I was told by a source, the best player in the draft is Jason Tatum. So when they were going to make the trade and trade down because they knew Philadelphia loved Markel Fultz and that the Lakers were probably taking Lonzo Ball. So imagine the risk that Danny Ainge is taking. 
He thinks Jason Tatum is the best player in the draft. Now, at the time, he didn't know he was going to be first-team All-NBA type player. He could have taken him right there. You don't run the risk. I mean, imagine, I hate to say this to you Laker fans, Jason Tatum in the purple and gold. Oh. Yeah. Or Philadelphia, if you had him as well to go along with Joel Embiid. You might not need James Harden. That's what's so tricky, interesting, fun when it comes to these picks. Who you take, when you take them, you didn't take them, you passed on them, you traded the pick. Philadelphia traded up to take Markel Foltz. And meanwhile, Danny Ainge waited for Jason Tatum. Changed the franchise. You get draft picks and you get a player who changed the franchise. Brought him back. Relevance. And then you sprinkle in these other players. I mean, Jalen Brown, not many people knew him out of the Pac-12. Marcus Smart may not have watched him out of the Big 12. There was an incident that took place during his college career that, you know, he had uh, interaction with a fan. But other than that, you were like, all right, seems like he's a nice player, built like a football player. You piece them all together. Everybody knows what their role is. You don't have the jealousies there. You know, Marcus Smart had to realize he's not the second coming of Steph Curry. And once he embraced, this is what I do, this is what I do well, he became the defensive player of the year. Jalen Brown, it's tricky. You see what Jason Tatum's doing, you probably think, I could do that. But if you have that jealousy, that starts to eat away at the core of who you are. But when you win together... We've mentioned this with Scottie Pippen. He had to understand his place. And if he did, he was going to benefit. Because if Scottie Pippen went to play someplace else, let's say he ended up in Houston or Portland and never went to Chicago, or played there for a little while, he'd have great stats, he wouldn't be an all-time great. And he wouldn't have those championships there. It's understanding your role. The great teams are littered with players. Chris Bosh, sacrifice your ego. All fit in with Dwayne Wade, LeBron James. The Celtics, Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale could have led the league in scoring, in my opinion. Uh, Robert Parrish, understanding your role. If we do it together, we can win championships. Individually, my stats may suffer. We're all about stats. Got to get my touches. It's when you have teamwork within the teamwork, and that is you sacrifice your egos. Golden State. Klay Thompson could have been the leader of another team. Draymond Green understanding his role. What do you need me to do tonight? Because it may change the next game. I have great appreciation for that. Understanding who you are, what you do well, and embracing it. And these two teams that are probably going to play for the NBA championship have certainly mastered that. At least outwardly, they have. 